Well, here I am again, your void expert, Lord Freak. In our latest video, we have delved into the mystery of the Shadow Moon Clan and how they represent the metaphysical element of the void through the stars. Today, my friends, we came back to Azeroth for a topic as unsettling as the last, maybe even more. If, in the setting of H.P. Lovecraft, the stars and the cosmos were full of terrifying creatures, wait until you delve into the depths of the ocean and the earth of Azeroth. What are we waiting for? Let's dive in. Well, for years, we have been dealing with the cultists of the old gods and the old gods themselves. So, they are not unfamiliar to us. Until Battle for Azeroth, we have mostly dealt with the Twilight Summer, the Slitted, and the Faceless Ones. In Ankarash, Uldar, or in the Bastion of Twilight. Not even mentioning having to deal with some mad Black Dragon aspect. And Twilight Summer was cool, they were the perfect embodiment of cultists and Lovecraft horror in WoW until Battle for Azeroth. Because in Battle for Azeroth, we get Brothers and sisters, behold our glorious destiny. Kathir, the most disturbing cult we got in Warcraft so far. Actually, the Kulturans generally named the faceless ones as Kathir that rose up beneath the tides. And the Kathir are the most Lovecraftian element we saw in the game ever. From their octopus-like design, to their music, their voice act, and how disturbing they were during BFA. Corruptic people in a way that is as if they came up from a Lovecraft short story. And yes, they came beneath the tides. Just like how Cthulhu was buried beneath the ocean in the depths. Nuzot was buried as well. And those Kutir were created by the will of Nuzot. And they were corrupting the waters of the ocean to destroy everything around them instead of giving life. And so, during the questline, we slowly purify their wicked magic, but also encounter something interesting. Skeletons, undead raised by Katir. Well, weren't dead and void two separate powers, just like the Shadow Moon clan, the Katir were able to reanimate the dead using void magic. Through the quest line, you would also hear the Katir saying quotes like I am no longer. The thousand truths. You get the idea. Due to the influence of the old gods in Azeroth, its people always tend to hear voices and truths whispered to them from below, beneath the earth and sea, the domain of the old gods. You see, just as the void can be manifested from above, from the stars and the cosmos, they also come from below. You see, the depths of Azeroth are actually cursed. There is the Naga, the Kutish, and the Great Whispering Darkness below. And the Morlocks. Yes, Morlocks are great servants of the old gods, and you can't convince me otherwise. Even more disturbingly, they claim the Turut, our Turut, awaits in the depths. Your true 
What is that truth? What's hidden from us beneath the tides of Azeroth's ocean? Is it related to Helia? Did she know about the truth? Considering how close her domain, Helheim, was to the darkest depths of Azeroth, the place where Nuzot waited for us. Also, we have the Tide Sages. In my opinion, just another path to shamanism, mastered on the sea. You see, in my latest video, I argued that shamans tend to succumb to the void, just like the Shadow Moon Clan. Taking the theory further, due to their deep connection to the earth and sea, but especially to the sea, shamans can harness the corrupted waters of Azeroth as well, and they should. You struggle at the surface, but he waits below. So, in a sense, we are actually surrounded on all sides by the void. Remember, in one of my recent videos, I talked about that the Black Empire and the Heart of Twilight could actually be the greatest threat in Warcraft, that Nialota is just hidden at the other side of the veil, and with each opportunity, blend into our world. We also have the Freeds of Davis' work, the Emirat Nightmare, physical manifestations of Azeroth's nightmares, alone threatened to devour Valshara. They are the stars. They reside in the darkest depths of earth and sea, and they can manifest through actual nightmares into existence, not to mention their light counterparts the Nauru has to become Void Gods at some point. See, somehow, the Void always has the upper hand in every case, and they can harness the power from the other cosmological forces, Death, for example. The Burning Legion was the biggest threat against them, but of course, we almost destroyed the Legion and helped the endgame of the Void. Somehow, the Void always gets the upper hand. Remember what Zalatat once said about Zot? But as was so often the case, even defeat ultimately worked in Zot's favor. As you see, no matter what we do, the Void will end up victorious. No light, no escape, the Forgotten King returns. Also, what Zawal saw, the end of everything would be the mysterious Seventh Force, yes, and the Crooked Serpent, but the thing is, they even mentioned the Crooked Serpent. <laughs> and, in the recent video, we have talked about the stars, right? Well, in Najatar, there was a manifestation of Nuzot called the Eye of the Corruptor. Everywhere you look, the stars gaze back. You know their form already, you have but to listen. Yes, you have but to listen. And that's all for today. I may continue this series and explore the depths of the void in the days to come. But for now, if you like this mini series, please subscribe and share the video. And let me know what you think in the comments below.